Welcome to Physics Next Book. In this video, we shall discuss why photons do not have a rest frame of their own. Come to think of it, in free space, all photons move with the same constant speed that cannot change. So, if they had a rest frame of their own, that would have been an inertial frame alright. But still, they cannot have one. To see why, we need to remind ourselves what do we mean by a reference frame, what does it do for us, and how. Let's take them one at a time. Of course, the term reference frame or frame of reference is something with respect to which we can describe motion of objects under observation. A reference frame is not necessarily a physical object like a room or a moving train or the planet Earth, not even the distant stars that Sir Newton talked about. These are all examples of reference frames. To answer what is a reference frame, one may say, a reference frame is the idea of a group of observers distributed all over the space in a common state of motion and each carrying a clock synchronized with all others of the group such that they can uniquely quantify the motion of anything they choose to observe. It sounds a little vague, right? Let's note all the talking points. Distributed all over the space means there is one observer at every location of space at any given instant. These locations combined give us the space axis. Actually, it is all space, but since we are showing only one dimension, it boils down to just the space axis. As the synchronized clocks carried by these observers tick at the same rate, they all move up the time direction in unison, keeping their spatial locations fixed, so they are in a common state of motion with no relative motion among the group members. They therefore keep going along vertically upward lines. This makes the space axis progress in time as well. This constructs the space and time coordinate grid. Any event is assigned a unique set of space-time coordinate values as per its location on this grid. Finally, what do I mean by quantifying the motion? Well, a reference frame helps its observers assign space and time coordinates to any event occurring in space-time. We have a detailed video on why the idea of space and time, which I'm sure you understand, should not be perceived separately but as a whole. Link is in the i button and description. In short, we can think of space-time as an arena where the universe plays itself out. Each point of the space-time is therefore an event. It so happens that everything that we can observe has to move through the space-time. So there is a space-time trajectory associated with it. We call this trajectory the world line. Each point on the world line is thus an event point to which our reference frame assigns spatial and temporal coordinates. This means as an object under observation moves along its world line, we can quantify its spatial locations and tag them with the corresponding timestamps. Mathematically, this is charting the object's position as a function of time. This is what we mean by quantifying the object's motion. Now, we obviously do not want to spend all our lives observing objects. We would rather observe them for a while, long enough to gather data on its position and velocity. With these two data, we can apply Newton's law to calculate and predict the object's future course of motion. At the very fundamental level, this is all physics does. Using a set of initial data gathered by observation, it predicts the future. So you see, our quantitative description of the physical world, our ability to observe and analyze it using the laws of physics, all of it starts from a reference frame assigning space and time coordinates to events. This leaves us with the last question, how is this coordinate assignment done? Of course, one way is to fill up all space with observers to make the coordinate grid as we have just seen. But it is rather impractical for obvious reasons. After all, how many men can we really hire for this job? Turns out, there is another way, equivalent with the coordinate grid method, but can be taken care of by a single observer. You may think this is trivial. Just let the guy use his wristwatch to see the time of an event and pull up a measuring tape from the origin to the event to know the distance. Think again. Remember, we said observers in their common state of motion at the very start. This means an observer cannot move relative to other observers of his frame. So moving around pulling measuring tapes is out of question. If this restriction sounds ridiculous, you need only to remember one of the very basic outcomes of special relativity principles. 
that relative velocity between two observers makes their clocks run at different rates. In low velocity scenarios, this difference is too small to notice so tips or scales work fine in our day to day life. But fundamentally this method is flawed so should not be depended on. The method that works for any velocities involves the observer sending light signal to an event and catching the reflected signal back. If the observer notes down the emission and reception time of the signal, using that a unique set of spatial and temporal coordinates can be assigned to that event. This we have discussed in an earlier video so let's not spend time on the details here. Instead, you need to focus on the fact that for this method to work, the emission and reception of light have to occur at two distinct time instants on the world line of this observer. On his world line, the observer always sees himself at the same spatial location in his rest frame. So he sees the space-time interval between the emission and reception events only as a time interval. So this is a time-like space-time interval between the emission and reception events. If you don't know about time-like intervals, and you should, there is a video link for you in the cards and description. Anyway, since space-time interval itself is an invariant by definition, the time-like nature of this one won't change for observers in other inertial frames. So they will also see it as a time-like interval. This means for a reference frame to be able to assign space and time coordinates to an event, it's observer's world line must be a time-like curve. We are talking about inertial observers in their inertial frames for now, so this curve is a time-like straight line. In a space-time diagram drawn by an inertial observer, his own world line is nothing but the vertically upward time axis. It will look like a slanted straight line within the light cone in a space-time diagram drawn by observers in some other inertial frame. So, do you see why a photon cannot have its own rest frame? Even if the photon itself could serve as a thinking living observer, its world line is obviously light-like, not time-like. So any pair of emission reception events on the photon's world line is always separated by a light-like interval which is always zero. Y0 is explained in a video on types of space-time interval I made long back. Thus, for a photon, any emission reception event pair occur at the same time and at the same place. But we can see that the emission and reception are at two separate space-time points. Yeah, we can because we are looking at our space-time diagram, representing our perspective of the space-time, which is very different from what the photon sees. To understand the perspective of a photon, let's draw the space and time axis of a different inertial frame and make it go as fast as light. As this other frame moves with higher and higher speeds, the Lorentz transformation process makes its space and time axis tilt more and more towards the light cone, eventually both touching the light cone at the speed of light. Thus, for a photon, all of its space axis lies on the light cone along which any interval is zero by definition. So, from the photon's point of view, any spatial distance is always of zero length, meaning all events occur at the same place. The time axis of the photon also lies along the same light cone. So any temporal separation is again of zero duration, which means all events occur at the same instant as well. So for photons, it is literally everything everywhere all at once. So they don't need a rest frame of reference or any frame of reference for that matter. That's all for this video. Do let me know what you think the world would look like if you could move at the speed of light. Thanks for your time and I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.